All right, we're all set. Great. I'm trying to get up streaming um, on my, my end as well here. So um, thank you, Olivia. Uh, is Taisha with us as well? There you are. Hi, Taisha. Welcome. Hi. Um, and welcome to everybody else. Thank us. Thank you for joining us on the Friday afternoon. Um, Trying to get up. All right. Sorry, I'm just getting the watch party going here as well on Facebook. So, um, thank you, everybody. Welcome um, to the Friday afternoon, June nineteenth. Uh, briefing and because it is June 19th uh, I want to wish everyone a happy Juneteenth and I want to share some remarks uh, to start today uh, about about this holiday. Um, June 19th 1865 was a foundational day in the history of our country. It should be celebrated along with our other great milestones as a day when the struggle for freedom triumphed. Um, on that day, General Gordon Granger arrived on horseback with 2,000 soldiers in Galveston, Texas, and issued a proclamation stating, the people of Texas are informed that in accordance with the proclamation of the executive of the United States, slaves are free. This involves an absolute equality of personal rights and rights of property. Uh, with that dramatic moment, Nearly two and a half years after President Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation went into effect, the institution of slavery as it had existed was finally ended throughout the United States. When people who had been enslaved heard the news that day, they celebrated and they rejoiced. And today, 155 years later, we again remember and celebrate this moment of progress. At the same time, when those people were freed, from bondage, they were given nothing with which to start new lives. And this country has never fully reckoned with that history or that great debt. Juneteenth is a day of celebration, but it is also one of reckoning. In the years of delay it took for emancipation to reach Texas, we can also see the slowness with which this country has moved, not only in to, to ensure basic freedoms, but also the broader rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, which all Americans are entitled to through our foundational documents. We still today must do much more to ensure equal access to those rights. I am committed to working with partners to address this here in Burlington, and I feel great hope that our current moment represents an opportunity to create real and lasting change. In future years, the city will seek to partner with community leaders to make Juneteenth even more of a moment of vibrant celebration and reflection here in Burlington. This year, I encourage all Burlingtonians to use this day to reflect on the country's history and how we can work together to forge a more just future. Taisha, thank you for joining um, this briefing. Um, I very much welcome it. I'm sure Burlingtonians would as well if uh, you had any additional shot, thoughts to, to share about this holiday, as well as, um, uh, you know, I know from uh, cities you've lived in, um, it's maybe some thoughts uh, about how we um, properly uh, mark this day in, on future Juneteenth, Juneteenth here in Burlington. Definitely, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so in cities that I've lived in, we had big celebrations uh, for Juneteenth, and, and it was kind of carnivalesque. And it's something that I wanted to do for the city of Burlington this year, but with the pandemic, um, the planning for that wasn't able to to go through for for everyone's safety, I think. But for um, the upcoming years, I do want it to uh, be a, a really big deal and, and a mainstay here in Burlington. But what I want people to really understand and what is really important to remember, and, and Mr. Mayor, you touched on this a little bit, is that when the enslaved were freed, they were freed without any resources. So no money, no food, no housing, no education, because learning to read and write would literally get you killed. So no way whatsoever to be able to take care of themselves or their families. That forced them to continue to work for their master, 
not for financial gain, but for basic necessities like food and housing, still occupying those same meager slave quarters that they were freed from. The former enslaved people became sharecroppers, and some, including my great grandparents who lived in Mississippi, remained indebted to the de to, into the master's family until the mid '80s. Um, those who were who owned slaves, they received reparations from the U.S. government for their lost revenue. At the same time, still getting free labor from the sharecroppers. The people who were enslaved, as I said before, received no help financial or otherwise. And if there's a wonder why Blacks have so much poverty, why Blacks are so left behind by every single measure, it's because of the legacy of slavery and a legacy of reconstruction. Juneteenth is very important to that understanding. And it, it's called Freedom Day. But for most of us Blacks, we call it Free-ish Day since 1865. So I am Glad that you made this proclamation today, Mr. Mayor, and uh, I look forward to working with you more on all of the issues that are related to um, this particular day and everything that came after that. So thank you for, for the time that you gave me to speak and thank you for the proclamation again. It's appreciated. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Taisha. And we will be issuing a, a, a formal proclamation um, before the end of the day to kind of commemorate um, this uh, and this discussion. Um, uh, I um, do just want to um, say uh, to you uh, um, on this day, Taisha, how thankful we are to, to have you on the, on the Burlington team. Um, again, just uh, it, we are obviously going through um, a challenging moment as a community with respect to uh, race, racial justice, and we're going through a challenging moment as a country. And I think um, uh, I'm, I'm very thankful to everyone who is involved in recognizing that we needed some additional uh, capacity within city government to make proper progress um, on these issues and, and created this new position. And I'm very thankful that you personally chose to up uproot your, your life and come here from Minneapolis and, and be part of this team uh, during these challenging times. Uh, I do want to, you know, further just share with uh, the public that, um, as I as I indicated on Wednesday at the briefing, uh, I've continued to be in communication with the Racial Justice Alliance throughout the week. I'm hoping that we um, uh, have will have further discussions um, very soon and be able to together um, uh, announce um, some real progress on. On, on racial justice in the in the weeks and months ahead, um, it is it is not just the slavery and the original um, debt that we've just been talking about here that has never been addressed. There are more um, recent injustices that um, similarly have uh, compounded the original um, problems, and and that we we must make progress with with turning around. And I think we have a moment we can do that. Um, you know, we've had a big week here, and I think you know one. I do regret uh, element of the, this week that at times it has seemed as if um, I've given the impression that I'm in opposition uh, to um, what is being called for here, and and that is um, that is not where where I am or, or where my heart is. I want to see us make progress. Uh, I, I appreciate all of the points that have been made by the Racial Justice Alliance, and want to talk, you know, want to say yes to many of them, and the ones where I think there are constraints to. Um, saying moving forward exactly as they have written. Uh, I want to talk about how we get to their goals through um, consensus and uh, collaboration. So uh, we'll have more to say, I hope, as soon as Monday. And uh, certainly this will be a conversation that will continue into the, into the weeks ahead. So thank you. Thanks again. We had a few other items you wanted to speak to today. Um, I think Olivia is going to put up a slide deck. Uh, as we tend to in these briefings. The, um, and I see we're joined by Kara al Nazrawi, who is our Church Street Marketplace Director and is playing a big role during this pandemic in serving the entire uh, small business community here in Burlington. And we have, um, and uh, I think an exciting announcement today. It's not a, it's, it's not something out of the blue. People have heard us talking for uh, weeks about 
our various efforts to make space for restaurant and retail recovery. Um, we, for weeks now, have had some additional uh, an expanded street, street street seats program where there are numerous uh, restaurants and I think at least one retailer which have expanded into the city right away um, for their operations so that they can have outdoor operations this summer um, in areas that we wouldn't normally have permitted. Um, we have set up these grab and grow grab and go pickup spots. And so many restaurants are only kind of partially open or not really open for indoor dining at this point. We want to make um, pickup of, for um, takeout food as, as easy as possible. And so you'll see, if you haven't yet, a number of spaces around town that have been designated those quick pickup spaces. The third piece, and in some ways the biggest piece, is one we've been working on for a while, which is the open streets uh, plan, which is uh, a pretty ambitious plan to really build on that concept and let more of our retailers and restaurants in the downtown expand into the into the public right away and actually into the street itself so that we um, really can accommodate a significant number of, of people in the downtown for commerce, for restaurant and, and retail, and do so um, safely, do so consistent with um, everything that we talked about so many times on this briefing, uh, needing to avoid closed spaces and big crowds, keep keep social distancing. So, so how are we going to do that? Uh, Cara, help me out here. Why don't you share with uh, folks the, I think, pretty big news about how um, we're, this is going to play out over the course of the summer. Great. Thanks, Mayor. Um, yeah, we have a pretty large interdepartmental team made up of people from the Marketplace, um, Parks and Rec, Burlington City Arts, and DPW. Um, the Open Streets Initiative is the final piece to this Making Space Initiative. Um, the biggest part is we will be closing Cherry Bank and College Street um, around Church Street for the entire summer, starting June 27th, so every Saturday, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't get angry with me yet. <laughs> that was the wrong messaging. Um, every Saturday um, from 12 to 8, we are closing down those blocks around Church Street to allow retail and restaurants to spill out into the street. Um, it essentially increases their revenue producing space. As you know, they only have 25% capacity indoors and many of these restaurants, <clears throat> excuse me, don't have any capacity outside in front of their establishments. So we've heard from, we've gotten a lot of enthusiastic support. In fact, we hadn't planned on closing every Saturday, but there was um, a lot of positive feedback and um, a lot of people who wrote and asked us to do it more frequently. As you all know, um, all our locally owned small businesses are struggling right now. And so this we've been getting good reception on this. So I'm really excited about it. So Open Streets, um, as many of you may know, because it's a it's a it's a brand that has been used before. Open Streets means closing the streets to cars but opening it to pedestrian traffic and businesses in this sense. So um, again, these restaurants will be reservation only, which is how, uh, how restaurants are working right now outdoors anyway. Um, we don't encourage crowding or anything of that sort, but um, we will have outdoor cafe space and displays for retailers all throughout the summer on these streets. And, um, and Olivia put the, the link to um, the website down there to get a little bit more information. Great, Cara, thank you. Um, it's awesome to see such a um, list of organizations, businesses that are gonna be involved in this. And yeah. let's, um, uh, and it's cool to see South Champlain Street, even a little bit off of Church Street is involved in this too. That's sort of where the conversation began in some ways and in front of uh, August 1st. Did you have something yes. you wanted 
get jumping Sorry. over that. I probably should have mentioned that as well. Um, so while working with the owners of August 1st, we think it, it would also make sense they would like to coordinate and on every Saturday, they will be closing from Main Street to the far side, the south side of their business, which they've closed before. So many people um, will know the space I'm talking about. And again, that will also be having tables and chairs and spilling out on the street. I think a lot of people have seen this has been happening in areas, uh, other cities in the country. Um, it's a large coordination. We are providing security at these spots um, and we have volunteers from city staff who will be there the entire time. Um, and I just, I, I'm really excited about it. I think it, it, it could it could possibly be a game changer for some of our small businesses that are really in dire straits right now. Well, let's hope so. Um, and again, the first one of these is not tomorrow, but it is a, a week from tomorrow. Yep. And uh, I hope the community will come out and uh, uh, be, a, be a part of this. Um, we, uh, you know, I think this is, we've, you know, I know whenever we encourage activity, we have to do so mindful that this is not in any way intended to undermine the great work that everybody is doing, keeping the virus uh, constrained. And I just, I just want to paint the picture of how this is consistent with our current guidance. We talked with Wednesday uh, uh, with Dr. Leffler about the three C's um, that avoiding closed spaces, uh, crowds and close contact. Um, uh, 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 that's what you want to avoid, especially when you have all three of those together. Um, the news this morning uh, from that kind of updated story from BT Digger about how many people it appears were affected at that basketball game in early March, really kind of where you had all three of those things going on together. That's mm -hmm. where there's really a chance for a major spreading event. Um, we, this is explicitly being designed um, to avoid that. So we will, First of all, this is outdoors, and we know that outdoor transmission, where there's good, you know, good ventilation, is much less likely. Um, we are hoping that significant numbers of people participate in this, but by closing down so much of the downtown, um, the idea is that people can really spread out in those, in those, on those closed streets, and that the tables can be distanced from each other, so you're not in close contact from one household to another sitting at a table. Um, it's, uh, I think, we can get this right in a way that. Um, uh, that is good for the economy, good for the community and the spirit of this community um, and is is safe and doesn't undermine our um, up until now uh, very strong community efforts to keep the virus suppressed. So, Cara, thank you and everyone who worked on this. I know, that, you know, it's like it's easy to have the idea. Let's close down around the streets. And then there's a ton of detail that has to be worked out and a lot of communication with a lot of people. It seems like you've got us in great position to do this. Thank you. Great. Thank you. And I think we did want to share um, a quick update about the other making space initiatives that you referenced too. So yeah, have a little more information. Definitely, I'm I'm happy to. Um, yeah, perfect. Thanks for popping that up. Um, so the other initiatives, which I think people have heard of, but they're definitely worth reiterating, is that. Um, we are allowing restaurants and retail to um, participate in a streamlined permitting process to block for the entire summer up to two parking spaces in front of their business um, so that they can have permanent seating out there and a tent perhaps. Um, and that is an expansion of our previous street seats program. In addition, there are several parking spaces that are reserved right now in the city for grab and go. We've been hearing from a lot of restaurants and retailers that takeout and curbside pickup are becoming a very important part of their business, especially for customers who are not willing or are unable to um, go into stores still at this point. Uh, and you can see some of the places where these um, pickup spots are and the participating restaurants that have blocked spaces outside of their establishment. So please visit them and um, help support their recovery. Excellent. All right. Thanks again, Cara. Um, and I think that was the end of our prepared uh, presentation for today. I did see, it looks like a couple, a couple members of the news media are on the Zoom. I'd be happy to take a few questions if there are any. 
great. Our first question is from Sawyer from BT Digger. And Sawyer, you should be able to enable your microphone now. Hi there. Um, I was just wondering if we could get some reaction from you. There's a lawsuit that was dropped today against the Burlington Police Department in the city um, in a use of force complaint. It was the Lizou, uh, I'm going to butcher the guy's name. Do you know which one I'm talking about? I do. It was the Luizo case, right? Luizo, yeah. And you're saying dropped it. You mean it was... It was completely it, dropped with no outside court settlement. Right. Um, I did. I was aware of that. Um, obviously, I mean, anytime uh, a lawsuit against the city is, is dropped, that's a, that's a good thing for, from the, the city's perspective. It uh, means that any potential liability is for that case is gone. I, I'm... And so I welcome it from that financial perspective. Um, I am not surprised to hear that this is the outcome, given that, um, frankly, it was always very, um, it, it, it never seemed to me or the, the city team that there was any, any wrongdoing on the part of the city in, in that incident. It was a kind of chaotic late night scene where officers were responding to, um, you know, a, a pretty, uh, unacceptable situation. And, and, um, uh, so hearing that the, it was, it, again, it just wasn't clear that the officers had done anything wrong. I'm not surprised to hear that a suit has been dropped. Great. Um, and then can I ask one more follow up about this new, uh, open streets initiative? Of course, go ahead. Um, in terms of like liquor licensing for outside consumption, how is that working and interacting with the city and the state? Yeah, I can take a shot at that, but um, I might not get a hundred percent right card. Do you want? Do you want to speak to it? You still with us? No, we may sorry. Have you th you think after three months I'd know where the unmute button is? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that question? I didn't get it all. Yeah, I was just wondering if you could um, talk a little bit about the process in terms of uh, getting liquor licenses for outside consumption and how that process has changed in light of this new initiative. Yeah, so actually that's an important piece that you're mentioning and that's one of the moving parts that we're still nailing down with the DLC and the clerk treasurer's office um, in the next week. So we do have a letter into them. Um, everyone who is who already owns currently has a license to serve um we are asking for a blanket expansion and we've given them a list and an area and also letting them know our process with having security on there and i'm waiting for a response from them um, but we've been in active communications and this seemed like the easiest way to do it to let them know the dates and the times and they are making sure that everyone who is serving alcohol and participating has a license that is in good standing got it thanks yes Thank you, Sawyer, for, for joining us today. And um, is there any, any other questions, Olivia? It looks like that's all we have for members of the media today. Um, very good. Well, thank you, everyone. And uh, have a good weekend. We will, our plan is to be back here. Maybe I will just mention, because um, it's an emerging, it's a plan that's just taken shape really over the last 24 hours, what the plan is for Monday in terms of city meetings. We will have a board of finance meeting on Monday at, I believe, 5 p.m. is the plan. And that will be a 5 to 6 p.m. meeting to, and I want to make clear, we're not dealing with the budget in that meeting. We are addressing some several other uh, city actions. And then um, I am calling a special city council meeting for 6 o'clock um, for further discussions of the budget. There will, President Tracy and I have, I talked yesterday and his plan is not to have any um, uh, votes on the budget, any um, votes on any amendments, um, but it will be an opportunity for the for counselors to ask questions of the administration about various elements of the budget. And so we expect there to be uh, you know extended discussion. Um, uh, but again, no action planned on the budget on Monday. Uh, action is expected for the following Monday, the 29th, which is the last city council meeting of June um, uh, before uh, a budget really needs to be passed before the end of the month. And uh, 
uh, we are expecting a, so a busy night on the 29th between that and several other, item, other items planned for the 29th. Um, with that, I, uh, I, I think we will say goodbye for the day. Thanks again, everyone. Have a good weekend. We will, we will see you Monday.